Hello everyone, this is Gary Lyon with NCSI, and today we are discussing how to configure an LDAP import. We will cover both uh, cloud and on-premise installations. So first off, I'll go ahead and log into my system. I've selected the administrator role, and now we'll just go ahead and click the wrench to go into the back end for our admin panel. Once we've gone ahead and selected that, we can scroll down here on the left-hand side, plus out integration tools, and click on LDAP settings. You can see here we already have an import set up, but we'll go ahead and start a, start one brand new. So setting name, this is just what the system will call it from here on forward. So we're just going to say test LDAP import and server. So for on-premise, you can go ahead and just type in your, uh, your domain name and let LDAP figure out the closest DC. You can also just type in one specifically, but keep in mind if that domain controller is ever retired in the future, you have to come in here and change that. The base DM, this is not typically set. This is only set if you're connecting and importing from a linked domain. So we'll go ahead and leave this blank. The user here, we're gonna go ahead and type in, you can do the fully qualified or you can just uh, type in the local, just depends on which, uh, which one your domain prefers. And we've typed in our username and password. Our encryption method, we can leave this blank. You can do LDAP S uh, if, you, if you want. Uh, the big difference here between your on-prem and your cloud is that the server will be the IP address of the server. Because you will be connecting through the SSL tunnel, otherwise known as the VPN, DNS does not come through. So you'll need to type in the IP address of the, DC, of the domain controller you're, you're connecting to. Um, the one thing to keep in mind that if you are typing in the IP address and you select LDAP S, the um, certificate validation will fail because it's unable to validate the certificate because you're typing in through IP, not by host name. Uh, so it's not typically recommended to select LDAP S. The other option is if you do need to select LDAP S, you do have to submit a support case with Avanti to have that fully qualified domain name added to the host files of your cloud instance. So we're gonna go ahead and pass that. All right, and then if it is an LDAP server, not an AD server, you can go ahead and check this box. The enable incremental updates, this does perform incremental updates from here on out. So it allows you to import a user and only import them again once LDAP says something about that user has changed. Uh, synchronous replication, this does uh, enable synchronizing changes that are performed in Service Manager back down to LDAP. Most customers do not select this option because we don't want people in Service Manager making changes and tweaks to users and having that affect any of our AD processes we currently have. Connection timeout, this is again just how long the system will wait before timing out, and then which business object are we importing into. So for this one, we're gonna go ahead and test our connection, and we see connection successful. Uh, if you do, if this does fail, just make sure that we've typed in either our local domain or specifically a domain server. Again, if you're on-premise, I do recommend typing in just the name of your domain and letting um, AD figure out the closest domain controller and do its own load balancing. So now it's, it's uh, tested, we will go ahead and click next. Okay, so here we have our presets, right? What are we importing? We're importing users. And then this is the filter that we're using. So for this situation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and look at some options we have for filters. I'm gonna go ahead and bring those on screen here. So by default, this is what we will use for most of our, of our imports here. Uh, and we'll go ahead and make sure that this is included somewhere in the description down below. And what we're doing here is we're just making sure that we're importing a person that the same account name is populated, that the mail, the email address is populated, and that they're a member of a specific group. So what you'll notice here is we also have this specific uh, number appended, and this tells LDAP, when we're doing this LDAP query, include everybody, include nested groups. So this um, 
this specific group, DLL IT, uh, in our Virtuolo uh, instance, it has additional groups nested within that group. And if we weren't, if we were to just say this, what you'll find is it'll only include people specifically in this group. But if we say, uh, if we say with this number appended, it will follow any groups that are nested within there and get us everybody as you would expect. Okay. And so this, what this would be is this is for our analyst filter, right? So we're saying, get us anybody that's in this all IT group and we're gonna mark them as an analyst. And to do that, we would need to perform two separate imports. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna walk through a single import, but this is how you would separate that out. And then we can also see here, we're pulling in people that aren't uh, disabled, don't have a password that expires or have a password that doesn't expire and a few other items. Here. And then for our end user LDAP, it's exactly the same in the beginning, except we flipped it and we put the member of this group in the not section. So we say, give us everybody that's not a member of this group. We can have multiple groups in here if you'd like, but by default, we typically just perform a single one. Okay. So again, for this demo import, I'm not gonna use either of these filters, but when we're performing this for our own environment, we would include one or two of these filters. Okay. We do have to select two items here to, to proceed forward. So we have to select our root LDAP. And by default, we can go ahead and just select our top level here. Okay. And so now, now that we've got this here, we'll go ahead and select our root node. So we'll plus this out and click on our, our uh, top level domain, click on that here, and we'll say add selected node as root. And then when we go through and we test this and we're looking for attributes, we wanna find a user with all the attributes on it that we need. So we're gonna go ahead and just find a specific person. And uh, since I like picking on Brian here, we're gonna go ahead and select Brian and select him as our sample entry. So you can see here we have our root LDAP node and our sample LDAP fields. Okay, and if we don't see, one thing to keep in mind here is if we don't see the option of a populated field in the next form, we wanna make sure we go to LDAP and find a user that has that field populated and select them as a sample LDAP entry. So we'll go ahead and click next. And as you can see here, this is now, it's gone ahead and populated a default uh, mapping for us. So this, op, uh, this option up here says, what, uh, what is the primary key field to use? By default, Service Manager uses email. So if two people have the same email address, it marks them as the same person. If they have different email addresses, it's, it's a different person. You can change this field um, as needed. Okay. And we do have some uh, presets here. I do typically recommend, once we're done uh, mapping everything, setting a default preset here. This will help you as you come in a second time and doing a user import to not have to re repopulate and redo all of this. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and use the default login ID, the default email here. We've got our first name, our last name, we've got our phone. Team by default is set to service desk and organizational unit is set by default to default. And then we have DN here as well. So you'll notice some of these have a checkbox set and some of these do not. If the checkbox is set, what will happen is we'll, we will still import the user if there is no value for this field in LDAP. If that checkbox is not checked, then the import for that user will fail. So as we add attributes and uh, add attributes here, we should keep in mind that is this needed for this user? Is it absolutely mandatory? If it is, we will leave that box unchecked and that user would not import. This is really great for helping to filter out any service accounts that might not have like an employee ID attribute populated. But if we do run in that situation and we're trying to import users, keep in mind that they, they do not come into the system. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a few changes here. So uh, one thing that I always like to do because um, LDAP doesn't always perform this, is I'm gonna go ahead and modify our first name to use an expression. 
And that expression here is to simply just go ahead and capitalize the first letter of, of their name. Because uh, sometimes in LDAP, what we find is sometimes it's all caps, sometimes it's all lowercase, sometimes it's a, a mixed grab bag. So I'm going to go ahead and change that here with this script. I'm going to do the same thing with the last name. Okay, phone, DN, and we're going to go ahead and add a few attributes here that'll make uh, make it quite a bit easier for us. So we're going to go ahead and add in the member of. So if we scroll down here on the left hand side, so this is the attributes here uh, inside of heat or ISM. And we're going to go ahead and find member of. Okay. And on the right hand side, we're going to go ahead and select. We're going to go ahead and select uh, use expression, and we're going to go ahead and paste this in. So I specifically have member of this member of LDAP groups. This is a free text field, um, or Unicode text field, I mean. And so what I want to do is I want to go ahead and pull in all the LDAP groups that this person is a member of, and I want to separate it by a new line. Uh, we can separate this by whatever uh, by whatever attribute we'd like, uh, but just keep in mind that when we're processing this and doing anything uh, in the future, uh, we need to be able to split it uh, easily. So in this situation, I'm doing a new line because LDAP doesn't allow a new line to be part of a name of a group. So we're going to go ahead and save. And then in this specific, uh, in our specific LDAP, I do know we have mobile phone numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in here as well. Okay, and here's a pretty good example here. So we can see that I don't have mobile phone over here as an option for this user. And this is because uh, Brian doesn't have mobile phone set on his account. So as I'm scrolling through here, you'll notice that I don't see mobile phone as an option to select. And that's purely because we selected a, a user that doesn't have it uh, set. So what we'll do for now is I'm just going to select something so I can go ahead and hit save and go back. And again, uh, just to go through and make sure, right, we don't care if a user doesn't have a phone, so we'll still, still go ahead and import them. Member of will always be set because a user is always at least a member of, a, of domain users, but we'll go ahead and check that box just in case for some reason. And now we're going to go back and select previous. And we need to go and find a user now that, that actually has their mobile phone selected. So let's go ahead and find a user. And this should be a good option here. Oh, and we've gone ahead and lost our changes. So let's go ahead and just make sure that Brian's got a mobile phone set. And he does not. So in this situation, since we don't have one here, we'll go ahead and just type it in manually. So let's go ahead and grab phone two. And I believe in LDAP it is just mobile. If it's not, we'll get an error and we can fix that. All right, we've gone ahead and, and populate everything again, and we'll go ahead and check this use default here. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit more. So what we'll see here is we have our org link set up, and this will go ahead and link the user to an org link based upon what OU they're in in LDAP. For this specific situation, and for most customers, that is not typically the setting that we want. So we'll go ahead and remove that uh, this option here.
and it's not letting me scroll to the right. I'll be right back. All right, so in this situation, we can see it's not letting me scroll to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down the shift, the control key, and use my scroll wheel to adjust my zoom. We can also adjust it uh, through the settings menu here and adjust our zoom if we'd like. Uh, but now once we zoom out a little bit, we can see that there is a, a little X over here. So we can go ahead and just remove this link. The other one that we're going to do is set our manager here. So we can, the heat object field name, we're going to go ahead and set our manager link. And we're going to go ahead and set that based upon the manager link here. And again, we can see that that option is not available to us because the specific user we have selected is not a does not have a manager set. So we'll go ahead and just type that in. And then what field are we going to match? We're going to match the DN attribute. So the way LDAP stores the manager is the DN of that manager is what's set. So we're going to set manager link. We're going to use the manager attribute and we're going to use the DN field of the related user to tell that that's the correct manager. And we're not going to set a default manager. Okay, our next option here is to set roles automatically uh, when a user is imported. So by default, we will always add our mobile role. So our self service mobile, this allows to us to use that pretty UI. And uh, if we were specifically importing in our analysts, we would go ahead and select whatever role we want for our analysts and have that just audit, added automatically for them as well. Um, if we want to remove any additional roles that someone might have been added to, so this is a good way to enforce that someone doesn't get access to things that they shouldn't, they shouldn't or don't need to, we can go ahead and uncheck this box and it will remove any roles that the people are in. One thing to keep in mind, right, if everybody's logging in to the system with their LDAP names and the users get pulled out of a group, then they can't log in the next morning as an analyst. We have to get that fixed and rerun this import. So this is a very uh, helpful option here, but it can cause you some problems in the future. Okay. Um, this is the option we would select to perform an import if the certificate is not trusted. So if we're in the cloud and we've typed in the IP address and we need to, to do it through LDAP-S, we can still perform that import if the certificate is not trusted. Uh, override employee login, this, this option uh, we, we don't typically use. And this is only um, for a situation where the email address doesn't match um, the login ID. And then the add LDAP login on imported users. So this will give you the option to log in when any users that are imported can log in with their LDAP credentials. So when we hit the login screen for service manager, they'll have a, maybe an internal login and then they'll have their external logins. And this just allows them to log in directly with their LDAP credentials. And then we can automatically disable users in ISM when they're marked as any criteria in uh, LDAP. So in this specific situation, we can see here when the user account control field equals the value of two, we'll go ahead and disable them. And then we can also do the same thing for expired users. So we'll go ahead and click next. And this is this last option that we have here is for excluding users. This is only used if uh, to exclude specific OUs that we don't want to import. Um, and we can go ahead and type this in. It allows regular expressions. So we can type that in. And keep in mind it's per line. So you would have you know anything here. And then your next line would be the next option that we're excluding. In this situation, we're not excluding anything. So we'll go ahead and click Next. And we'll go ahead and click Save. So in this situation here, if we were running this for the first time, we would click synchronize now and let that kick off for the first time. Uh, but I want to go ahead and show you what this is like to add it to the daily imports. We'll go ahead and just hit save. 
Okay, so now this has gone ahead and, and saved. We'll go ahead and add this now to our nightly LDAP import. So the easiest way to do that is to plus out workflow here on the left hand side, click on workflows. We'll go down to scheduled imports. Or scheduled entry, sorry. So now that we're done here at scheduled entry, we'll find our LDAP sync. This is provided out of the box. Uh, and we'll go ahead and click the edit button here. And you'll see that there is an LDAP sync. We have a started and a failed. And let's see what LDAP sync it is running. So we want to go ahead and run this new test LDAP import that we have just created. If you want to uh, perform multiple imports, you can just go over here on the left hand side to integration, scroll all the way down. There is an LDAP sync. And then we can run multiples as well. So. Okay, and in this situation, I don't want to get emailed every every single day when an LDAP import um, is complete. You might, or you might want to for the first couple of days just to make sure that it's verified or it's it's actually performing here. Keep in mind, it does do this service desk uh, manager email address, which is part of your global constants. So make sure that this is either a distribution list that wants to receive it, or it is your email address to make sure that you're getting this correctly. In this situation, because I don't want to get notified every single day when it runs, I'm going to go ahead and just remove that option and go over to stop. I will leave the failed option here because this will tell us maybe the if the um, account that we're using is now expired, maybe if we're in the cloud, that the VPN might be having an issue, um, and we want to go ahead and resolve that issue. So we just want to go ahead and leave this as an option here for us to notify us if something fails. So we've gone ahead and got all our options here, so we'll go ahead and scroll up. The last option to just validate and make sure here, if we go to configuration, this is the schedule that this will automatically import on, and we can see that it's using the LDAP sync. So we'll go look at LDAP sync here in just a second, but if we have a specific job or a specific time when we want this to kick off, we'll go ahead and just select that option from this drop down box and then hit save. So we're going to go ahead and save this. We'll see it pop up and say it's saved as a new version, so we'll click OK. And we'll go ahead and click the little back to versions button up here on the top right. And we can see here we have a new version, but we also see the green publish icon. If this green publish icon is not clicked and set as the current version, the changes we've just made will, will not take effect. So now uh, we just need to go and make sure that the scheduled job for LDAP sync runs at a time that we'd like it to run. So we can see here that it'll kick off at 4.54 p.m. and and if it keeps running it'll kick off it'll stop uh, it'll stop the job at 12 30. Uh, we probably don't want this to run in the middle of the day so I'm going to go ahead and select to kick this off at 1 a.m. and we're going to have this kill the job if it's still running for some reason at 3 a.m. I want this to kick off every single day we'll see the start date is somewhat in the in the recent history so we'll go ahead and do that and we don't want this to end at any point in time so we'll go ahead and hit save and just like that our LDAP sync will go ahead and run each day we can come in down here in the next day so it's tomorrow and make sure that there is an entry added for that LDAP sync workflow but other than that that covers how to go in create an LDAP import modify it for any of our recommended changes as well as go and set that import to occur daily, and then to go ahead and make sure that it's running at a time that makes sense for our infrastructure. So that's it. If you all have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us here at NCSI. Other than that, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.